<laughs> what a deck! Hello and welcome to What a Deck, where we play troll decks, rogue decks, and whatever the hell I feel like. I'm your host, Hardleg Joe, and today we're doing something a little different. While I don't mention it every episode, my goal with the What a Deck has always been to make decks that can stand the test of time. At least in Yu-Gi-Oh terms. That's one of the main reasons I stay away from meta decks and cards that I feel are too powerful. Those cards are most likely to end up on the ban list, and I want to try to make decks that can last at least a year. That's why, back in 2016, I did a retrospective over the first year's worth of what a decks to see how they had turned out over that year. That was on episodes 1 through 52. There's a link in the description if you want to check out that episode. Now, last time I did that, it was back in September both because it was near the anniversary of when the channel started, and also because I fell behind on making episodes, so I needed to skip a week, and that was how I filled it. Uh, this year, however, I'm on top of things, and I thought it would make more sense to go over everything now, at the start of the new year, as a retrospective over the previous year. And plus, back in September, when I planned to do this, links were new, and... I wanted to give them a chance to develop before I went over the decks and tried to explain how to improve them with Lynx. Because at the time, it was just like, add Mrs. Radiant. And now we got a bunch of- now we got the whole Lynx Rain Pack to look forward to. But anyway, this time I'll be going over year two of What a Deck, which is episode 53 through 104. Which will cover decks both from 2016 and 2017. So even though it's the end of the year, it's not like a 2017 retrospective, it's like a- a year's worth of episodes retrospective. I know that may seem kind of weird, but if I just did it on decks in 2017, not only would I miss a bunch of decks that I didn't do last year, but I'd also be talking about a bunch of decks that I just did like a month or two ago, and not a lot has changed in the last month, so there wouldn't be a lot to talk about. So that's why we're at 53 through 104, year two of what a deck. In this, I'll be analyzing three factors on each deck. Uh, what cards got hit on the ban list and what need to be changed as a result, how the deck functions under Master Rule 4 and what links could or should be added to it, and whether or not I think the deck can hold its own in the current game. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump right into it! So starting with deck number 53, the Amorphage Slot Machine. No banned cards, huzzah. Are they viable in links? Not in the slightest. If you're unfamiliar with the Amorphages, they're an entirely pendulum-based deck, where your scales lock down your opponent, but you need to tribute two monsters during your standby phase, otherwise the scales are destroyed. The deck was already kind of inconsistent, even when it was new, but if you got the right combo, you could pendulum summon two monsters out, uh, protect them for, like, lock down your opponent from doing anything for a turn, you tribute them during the standby phase, and then you special summon them back out again. Uh, under Master Rule 4, that, that's nigh impossible. Even if you use something like the Heavy Metal Foes Link monster, uh, like, you could make that, but then you wouldn't have the monsters to tribute when it got back around to your standby phase. And not only that, but in order to make the deck run at all, you have to run almost exclusively a Morphages. There's very little tech slots or room for originality in this deck. Uh, so it's not like you can use a lot of new Pendulum support to make this better. You pretty much have to run all the Morphages. So, final verdict, unless they get a Link monster that negates the tribute cost or summons two tokens every turn for you to tribute, I don't think this deck can do anything. I don't think it's viable. Good luck trying to make it. Uh, just making it work at all, I think, is going to be a real challenge. Deck number 54, Invincible Melodious. Once again, no cards were banned from this. In Lynx, it's pretty good. Uh, Melodious were never a deck that really used their extra deck all that much, and my variant barely used it at all. Uh, relies almost entirely on main deck monsters. That being said, this deck wasn't really good when I did it, and it's probably not good anymore outside of, like, casual matchups. Uh, the whole idea was that you could make your Melodious monsters immune to destruction and targeting, and then bump up their attack at your leisure, like, slowly, because your opponent can't do anything to hurt you. Uh, even at the time, they were vulnerable to kaijus, and as time goes on, the amount of non-targeting, non-destruction removal increases, making this deck less and less effective. Deck number 55, Tzolkin Toolbox Turbo. Uh, yet again, for the third time in a row, no cards on the ban list. As for how viable it is in Lynx... Ah! Good joke. Uh, if you didn't know already, Ultimaea Tzolkin is a difficult-to-summon extra-deck monster that summons other extra-deck monsters. 
As such, it's one of those few cards that's rendered nearly useless by Master Rule 4. Uh, you might be able to make it work, but not with the build I have. You'd have to come up with something completely reworked, maybe with the new Crystron Link, you could get enough monsters to summon the Link, then summon Tzolkin, then set a card so that you can summon something else. Uh, even then, it might be a little slow. And deck number 56, Naturia Burn. Yet again, no cards banned on it. Its performance in Lynx is pretty much unaffected by Master Rule 4. It uh, barely uses the extra deck, and when it does, it usually just makes like one monster, like maybe a Naturia Beast to help with Lockdown. Even at the time, this was pretty much a troll deck that wasn't all that viable, and in that regard, I imagine it works about the same today. Uh, you could upgrade some stuff in it, you could put, uh, replace the safe zones with Dimension Guardian, trade out the Call of the Haunted for Back to the Front, uh, but other than that, it should work about the same as it is. Good troll deck. Deck number 57, Skull Servant Beatdown. Zero banned cards, yet again, five in a row. Viability and links, pretty good. It uh, barely makes anything out of the extra deck, except for Psyframe Lord Omega, which is pretty much unaffected by Lynx, because it can leave the extra monster zone and come back. As for how it would do in the current game, well, I already made a 2017 version of it, which is just an upgraded version of this, and it works pretty well. It's a decent rogue OTK style of deck. If you can get the right hand, if you can get your plays off, you could do pretty good. Of course, any effect negation is going to shut down your King of the Skull Servants. But, but that's what you get for a rogue OTK deck. Deck 58, Dark World Abyss Heroes. Still, nothing banned. Has this been affected negatively by Lynx? Yeah, kind of. Uh, the whole point was to combine Dark Law with Dante. And while the Burning Abyss do have a Link monster, it can only be made with level 3 monsters, which makes it kind of incompatible with heroes and most of the Dark World stuff. You might be able to make it work, but... Uh, you know, either way, this wasn't really that great a deck. It's basically just Dark Law Turbo, but slightly worse. Uh, and while it does does work, I mean, you can still play it. I wouldn't recommend using it, even if you're playing outside of uh, Master Rule 4. Deck number 59, Black Wing Virus. Still, not a single banned card. Viability in Lynx. Out of all the decks that I have here, I think this one actually works better now than it did before Lynx. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with it, the whole the whole idea was to summon a black a big black wing easily and then use it as fodder for a virus card, like the crush card virus or the deck devastation virus. And I actually got some negative comments at the time for using the black wings in that way instead of swarming with them. But now that you can't really swarm with them, and now that we have full force virus... I, I think this actually works a little bit better. I actually might go back and try to do this again as a full-on stun deck. As for its viability right now, you probably don't want to run it as it is, especially since I foolishly left out Hawk Joe and we have a Lure of Darkness at 3, and like I said, full Force Virus. But I think the concept is solid, and I, and I look forward to trying it again with a better build here in a couple months or so. Deck 60, Red Dragon Turbo, and finally we have some banned cards. We have Max C and Emergency Teleport, both at one. And if you were going to do this again, I would re replace them with Red Support, like Red Warg. Uh, I think there's some other ones, I haven't really looked into it too much, but I know you'll definitely want Red Warg, if nothing else. Does this deck work in Lynx? Uh, decently. It could be better. Uh, this deck was more about ranking up Synchros than swarming with Synchros, and you can summon your Red Dragons from the graveyard, so it does a little better than a lot of the other Synchro decks, because you could still just make a huge beat stick and, and then just fight with that. And once we get that generic Fire Link that, that I'm sure will come out in some time in 2018, along with the Crystron Link, I think this deck can go up to full power again. Not that this is the most competitive deck in the first place, I mean, it was a solid rogue deck, and with some updates, it could be a solid rogue deck again. Uh, at the moment, though, meh. You could run this build, maybe with a few changes, but it's probably not the best you could do with Red Dragons. As, especially with the slow trap lineup. I would definitely switch that out for, for something a little bit more... a little bit more kick to it. Deck number 61, 77 Gimmicks Dynamite. Once again, no banned cards, and it is not affected by Lynx in the slightest. Uh, granted, this is a cheesy OTK deck, but it still works as intended. Good for a surprise troll win, and not much else. 
There's not really much you could change or update about this thing. Play it as is. Have fun. Troll your friends. Or non-friends. Troll your enemies. Troll whoever. Deck number 62, UA Toolbox 2016. Banned cards. The Monarch Storm Forth, which is now at 1. Used to be at 3. Uh, viability and links. It's pretty much unaffected as it barely uses the extra deck. UAs can do what they've always done. Yet again, this is a deck that I made a 2017 version of, so if you want to see how it would be updated, how it would work in the, the newer format, you could check out that one. Uh, I'd say it's slightly more viable than the 77 gimmicks deck. It's able to OTK like that is, but it can also do a bit of stun and some other things too. Uh, it loses really hard to hand traps and disruption though. It needs its searches. And with, with Ash Blossom being all the rage right at the moment, probably not the best pick. But I could see it coming back if hand traps fall out of favor, or if they get, ever get some new support. Probably not. Deck number 63, ABC Gadget Beatdown. Banned cards, Dark Hole is at 1, replace, replace with Lightning Vortex, uh, if, if you wanted to. Uh, viability and links, there are ways to make ABC work with links, uh, not this version. This this deck is pretty much terrible. Uh, it was made as a fan request right when ABC was announced. They wanted ABC and gadgets. And this was before ABC had come into the TCG. And you can really tell from this deck because it doesn't use any of the techs or strategies that would become common and well-known to ABC in the months that followed. Uh, if you want a decent ABC deck, I'd say look at my new Link-centric ABC deck from 2017. But even that one's kind of weird, because it relied on set rotation, which got limited, like, that week. But, but either way, it's better than this one. This one's pretty much garbage. I, I wouldn't recommend anyone use this for any reason. Deck number 64, Super Quantum Assault. Banned cards, the Elder Entity Norden is banned. But don't bother replacing it, because this deck is, is dead. Um, this deck is not viable in Lynx. It was all about swarming with Ixie monsters, and even then it wasn't all that great at it, and, and now it's just dead. And that's pretty much the, the final verdict. This deck was mediocre at the time, and Master Rule 4 just sort of killed it off completely. Uh, unless Super Quants get a lot of new support, like a Link and, and a new Ixie, I wouldn't consider running this or, or any Super Quantum build at all. Uh, sorry, Super Quantum players. Deck number 65, Mostly Pure Ignites. Banned cards, none in this deck, although it got hit pretty hard by Lynx. Uh, Ignites are another deck kind of like Amorphages that relied on summoning monsters out of your extra deck to maintain advantage. Uh, unlike Amorphages, though, this one has some room for tech slots. You could put some stuff in. If they get more supports to help out uh, a lot of the Pendulum decks that got hurt by Master Rule 4, you might be able to make this, this work. As for how it works now, I'd say it's nearly unplayable. Uh, with some good support, maybe the Metal Foes Link, a generic Fire Link, uh, they might be able to work again, just Ignites in general, but it wouldn't be with this build. You'd have to have another build with some other support cards that really sort of worked around the, the disadvantages that being in Master Rule 4 puts on, on Pendulum decks like this. Deck number 66, Secret Gendo Pendulum Lockdown. This played Magispector Kieran, which is now banned. Uh, not sure what to replace it with, since Kieran was partially the focus of the deck. Duelist Alliance, maybe? I don't know. Um, this is a strange one. As, as far as being viable in Lynx format, it's actually pretty decent. Uh, while it is a Pendulum deck, it mostly relied on lockdown monsters that were summoned from the hand. So, Lynx summoning doesn't really hurt it all that much. What really killed it was the banning of Kieran, which was the major playmaker of the deck, and really the only reason that you, you put in the, uh, the Magispector engine in general. But then again, I guess that's what I get for, for making a deck with something I knew was broken at the time. But it was a Patreon request. Uh, anyway, somewhere in this deck, there's a gem of idea. Using Jaugen, Gendo, and Secret Village to lock down everything is still a pretty strong opening board, uh, especially with the counter traps to back it up. It would just need a serious rework, maybe some like Pendulum counter trap deck or something. I don't know. This, this, this version, kind of dead, except for just the bare skeleton of an idea that maybe you could work with. Deck number 67, Cubic Burn. Zero banned cards once again. Uh, 
in link format works perfectly. Uh, barely uses the extra deck at all, maybe one monster at the most. As for how they would work now, pretty good. Uh, I mean, I, this is another. De this is a deck that I made a version of in 2017, and it's barely different from this one. Like, honestly, Cubics are just like... I, I, it's going to be a while before Crimson Nova gets power crept. Uh, being immune to all the monsters, being able to deal so much burn damage and attack twice, just really strong. Uh, Cubics are kind of weak to Ash Blossom, which is why I think you're not seeing them uh, pop up every once in a while as sort of like a rogue slot in tournaments and stuff like that. But again, I think if we get out of this like sort of hand trap format we're in at the moment, I think we still have a solid rogue contender, this, this very strong burn deck that can beat you down for 3,000. And assuming something completely unexpected doesn't happen, I look forward to playing essentially the same deck again in 2018. Deck number 68, Galaxy Eyes Felgrand. No banned cards in this one either. A viability in Lynx? Pretty solid. This is a deck that certainly could make more than one extra deck monster, but it doesn't really need to. You got a lot of strong main deck monsters and... The, the, the Ixie monsters you do make are usually these big, huge beat sticks that take a lot of your resources anyway. As for how well it do in the current game, I think it's a bit slow, but it still works. I'm not sure how you could update it if you want to. I don't think I'll come back to it anytime soon. Uh, there's not been any new Felgrand support or even really new Blue Eyes support or anything that, that I know of that would really work with this deck. But if you want a casual dragon deck that's full of big beat sticks and like rank 4 Ixie monsters, there you go. Deck number 69, Anti-Meta Triamids. No banned cards in this one either. Viability in Lynx? Great. It, it's nearly unaffected by Lynx entirely. As for how well it does, eh, I mean... In retrospect, calling it an anti-meta deck just because it had Necro Valley and Fossil Dino was probably reaching a bit. This is far from an anti-meta deck, especially now. Uh, but it does work. I I'm not sure how you could improve it much aside from maybe throwing some generic token slash link stuff to just, just beef things up. But it's another solid casual level deck. If you want to take something to locals that'll just be interesting, you can't go wrong with this. Deck number 70, Banished Troll OTK. Originally played Dark Hole at 1, I would replace that with Eater of Millions. This thing is completely and utterly unaffected by Master Rule 4. Uh, in fact, it, it may be better in Master Rule 4. I've been seeing this deck pop up from time to time in, in lists of like rogue decks that have been played at tournaments. And it's, it's pretty solid. Of course, this version itself needs to be updated. Mil Eater of Millions needs to be added to this. It's a perfect replacement for some of the slower cards like DD Warrior Lady. And like I said earlier, replace the, the missing Dark Hole with one of it. Um, you could also add some hand traps into this. And if we ever get it, you could always, uh, what's it called? You could always add Gandora Giga Rays. That, that thing is awesome for banished decks. But yeah, just a really solid, strong troll deck that uh, just needs a little bit of updating to make it relevant again. Deck number 71, Dark Cosmo Stun. Uh, no banned cards in this one either, and yet again, it's completely unaffected by Lynx. Cosmos were really one of those decks that everyone thought would prosper in Lynx, uh, since they don't really rely on the extra deck, and for one reason or another, they haven't really done it. Uh, but this version's solid as is. Uh, I'm sure you could improve it, maybe replace the Jurghetto with something stronger, some hand traps, uh, maybe some of the other Cosmos to make Dark Planet more viable, but, uh, Honestly, there's not much you could do to improve this deck that, that wouldn't change its win condition entirely. It's just good as is. Deck number 72, Tiny Beast Lockdown 2016. Zero banned cards once more. This deck was kind of hurt by Lynx, since the idea was to get out Naturia Beast and then beat down with Ronin Raccoon. But the deck is mostly Earth Monsters, so you can easily fit Mrs. Radiant in here and she would boost up Naturia Beast into a beat stick, so you could probably get roughly the same thing just by using Lynx instead of uh, Ixies. Might even work better, because you wouldn't be as reliant on level 2 beast monsters. Hard to say, though. Either way, a lockdown deck that just hits spells isn't really all that viable these days. That's the reason I didn't play it in 2017. If we get into a format where spells are king and meta decks are running 20 or more spells, I could see playing this again. But as it is, it's just been power crept. It's a lockdown deck focused around spells that can't survive in a world with so many strong monster effects. 
Deck number 73, Chaos Max OTK. Zero banned cards once again. Strangely, Master Rule 4 doesn't hurt this deck at all, but Link monsters themselves do. Since this is all about attacking into defense position monsters, it plays things like Swords of Concealing Light and Bearing Mirror Force, which are ineffective against Link monsters that can't go into defense mode. So it needs some updating, obviously. Maybe replace the Swords of Concealing Light with something more disruptive, like Book of Eclipse or Floodgate Trap Hole. Something that can stop your opponent on their turn from making links in the first place. But otherwise, it's pretty solid. Chaos Max isn't as powerful as he used to be. Uh, a lot of decks have an out to him now in, in the form of, like, Utopia the Lightning. But I still think that he can work really well in an OTK deck built around his double piercing damage like this. Especially using combos like Creature Swap with zero defense monsters. Because there's not really much your opponent can do for that unless they have negations and they're going to use it on Creature Swap. I may have to try this one again just to prove that Chaos Max can do some things. Deck number 74, Trap Monster Stun, 2016 version. No banned cards in this one either. Uh, once again, we have another deck that's nearly unaffected by Lynx. Uh, it, could, it certainly was better when it could summon more than one rank 4 monster, but it did that so rarely that Lynx haven't really hampered it as a whole. As for how it goes, it's really hard to say. This is one of those decks that I really wanted to play, but there's just been so many other neat new decks that I've wanted to take a look at and different requests and stuff like that. It's certainly still playable, and I think that it has the possibility to be a really trollsy stun deck. Uh, but without trying it out myself, it's hard to tell for sure. If I did run it again, though, there's not much I can think to change about it. You'll have to comment in the comments if you have any ideas for stuff I could add to this. Uh, or if you try it, try it out yourself, let me know how it goes. For now, I'm just going to say it's a mystery. We'll find out eventually. Deck number 75, Paleozoic Beatdown. No banned cards in this one either. Viability with Lynx, just like the last one. It could benefit from having multiple extra deck monsters, but because of the way I built it, it doesn't really need them. Um, this is also a really hard deck to judge. The Paleo Wetlands Beatdown was kind of a weird themed deck to begin with. The concept is decent, but it's far from the best thing you could do with Paleos. Even if I wanted to do this again, Paleo has evolved so much over the past year and so many new traps have been added, I'd probably just want to remake it from scratch. Uh, overall, I'd, it's still playable, but you could do so much better. Um, also, I just want to note, I'm surprised Raigeki Break doesn't get used in, in modern Paleo builds. I know Raigeki Break's kind of a bad card normally, but in Paleo, you can discard a Paleo card as the cost, and then chain that Paleo in the graveyard to the Raigeki break to summon it and get a solid plus one. Get on that meta, people. I, I, I want to see a build that uses Raigeki break. Deck number 76, Imperium Magnum Turbo. Once again, no banned cards, and once again, nearly unaffected by links. I mean, Empyrean Magnum plus Gorgonic Guardian is a pretty potent combo. It gives you two monster negations, but it rarely did that, so it's, again, it's not really a huge loss that it can't do that anymore. As for how it works in the modern game, I, I pr pretty badly, unfortunately. I actually tried to make this one again recently, and sadly, it's just been too power crept. These days, most people can bait out the negation, remove Empyrean Magnum with a card effect, and still have enough cards left to summon stuff to handle the, the Valkyrion and Burzion that get summoned. Uh, either that or they just kill Empyrean with Utopia the Lightning and then it doesn't you don't even summon the, the other Magnet Warriors. In either case, it just takes too much to fusion summon and once they get rid of it, you have like zero recovery. You might be able to make a more balanced Magnet Warrior deck, but I wasn't able to. Either way, still a solid casual deck, just not great enough for a second episode of the What A Deck. At least at the moment. Deck number 77, Ghost Trick Burn. No banned cards in this one either. This is another instance like the Chaos Max deck where it's hampered less by Master Rule 4 and more by Lynx themselves and their inability to go face down. Uh, the deck still works great against non-Link decks, but if you want something that's more effective in general, I'd probably recommend going with the Ghost Trick Beatdown, which I did this year. I mean, either way, it's still playable, and either way, it's very fun, but just much more for a casual setting. Deck number 78, Gradle Foes. Zero banned cards once more. 
Metal Foes and Lynx can still function, but it's hampered pretty ba badly. The, the Heavy Metal Foes Link really helps, but the addition of so many non-Link monsters in this, this particular deck makes it a little bit more difficult to pull off. Hard to say how it would work in general. Uh, despite being really a uh, unique deck, I don't really remember it well enough to say if it would work in the modern game. It's really hard to remember how well the, the, uh, the, the Gradles with the, the Metal Foes worked. Uh, it would probably be decent. If nothing else, it might be fun to just tech in a couple of Gradle Alligators if you're planning on playing the new Metal Foes. Um, but I think this year I won't be doing this again. I'll probably be doing Kai Joodles again before I do this. Uh, speaking of which, deck number 79, Pure Kaijus. Uh, interrupted Kaiju Slumber used to be played at 3, now it's at 1. I would replace it with Back to the Front and or Terraforming. Here we have the perfect example of a deck where not only did Master Rule 4 not hurt it, uh, it might have actually made it slightly better. You, you pretty much couldn't go into the extra deck before unless your opponent gave you a monster, just because you can only control one Kaiju at a time. But now that we have links, you can at least use, like, the Radian tokens and make something with them, possibly. It still wouldn't be a very viable strategy, but at least you could use the extra deck now. Uh, overall, this is a really fun troll deck, and I, I, I'd I really recommend it. It's going to be a while before Kaijus get power crept, and using the Kaiju counters and their monster effects can actually be pretty fun and interesting. It's, it's much different from using them the way most people use them as sort of just removal. And aside from replacing Slumber, the deck is pretty much playable as is. There's not really much you could do to update it. Uh, honestly, I'd play it again, if not for the fact that I only play archetypes once a year, and I kind of want to save the Kaijus to mix with something else. There's so many different things that work really well with Kaijus. But we'll see. If we get like six months down the road and I still haven't used Kaijus, I may come back to the pure Kaiju deck. And deck number 80, Cyber Angel Ultimateness. Banned cards, it had Norden in it, which is now banned. Uh, you could replace that with pretty much any instant fusion target, or just another rank 6, or even a Link if you wanted to. Uh, yet again, it's nearly unaffected by Links. It's a ritual-based deck that rarely, if ever, uses the extra deck. As for how well it works, uh, I wouldn't play this version. It did pretty badly at the time, but that's because I tried to combine Herald of Ultimateness with Cyber Angels, and it just ended up being too bricky. Uh, Cyber Angels in general, I feel, are pretty solid, maybe a little underrated, and I'd look forward to trying to build them again sometime in the future, uh, now that they've got a little bit of new support and Honest at 3. We'll see, I just have to decide if I want to do them on their own, or if I can find some way to mix them, maybe like some Cyber Angel Necros. Although that's what made this, this deck kind of bad, so maybe I should just stick to pure Cyber, cyber Angels. We'll see. Deck number 81, Gem Knight Toolbox 2016. Yet again, we have Dark Hole, which I played at 2 and is now at 1. Uh, you could replace this pretty easily with Lightning Vortex, though, since a lot of your cards get effects with the graveyard, and you can always discard Gem Knight Fusion and then add it back to your hand. As for Master Rule 4, this version wouldn't work very well under it, but they have announced a Gem Knight Link monster, uh, and I think if you built the deck with that in mind, like around that, you could make something pretty solid. So that's what I'd say overall. This version isn't playable anymore, uh, but Gem Knights as a whole are playable. And I do plan to make a new Gem Knight uh, deck once their Link Monster comes out in America, or at least gets an announced date in America. Uh, for the moment, I'm holding off, because it could be six to eight months before, before we get that. And given how the Link Monster works, the deck will probably be less of a toolbox and more of like a Gem Knight OTK which is slightly less fun for me, but I do like myself some Gem Knights. So, should should be fun when we finally get to that. Deck number 82, Destiny Board Stall. No banned cards in this one. Link format does not hurt this deck at all. Because it's hard to make something worse when it's already pretty terrible. Uh, <laughs> this was made as a Patreon request against my better judgment. Uh, I, I, I always tell people that boring stall decks with alternate win conditions don't really work, but I figured I would try it out just to see if I could make it work, and it really didn't. I'd recommend removing Card of Demise, because that really did not work in this deck at all. Even without that, I wouldn't really recommend playing this deck, but you certainly could if you wanted to. Deck number 83, 50 card Destiny Heroes. I made a 50 card Destiny Hero deck? <laughs>
<laughs> I barely remember this one. Uh, it has zero banned cards. Um, does it work in links? Kind of. This, uh, from what I can remember, this deck was kind of random. It was, it, I think I called it a tool bag. Uh, really, you just drew a whole bunch, and sometimes you could swarm the field with extra deck monsters. Sometimes you just made one. Sometimes you didn't make any. You just swarm the field with regular things. Uh, it's certainly worse under Master Rule 4, but how much worse is hard to say. Either way, as far as I can tell by looking at it, it seems pretty solid. Uh, I'm just not sure what I could change, mostly because I barely remember how it works. I remember enjoying it, and it, it looking at it, again, it did do 8 out of 10 out in the episode, so it's not terrible. Uh, but I just have no idea how it would hold up now, or how additional things like the new Vision Heroes would help. Uh, comment in the comments if you want to see Destiny Heroes again. I hadn't planned on making it, but, but I could. Deck number 84, Yang Xing Toolbox. Once again, a deck that played Dark Hole at 2, and now I have to replace one of them. Uh, really, you could replace it with a any Yang Xing. Uh, this also had Den Long in it, which is now banned. Uh, you could replace it with, uh, I don't know, some other Synchro Tuner. I, don't, I think there's a level 5 one. Either way, this this is one of the decks that is just objectively worse in Lynx. Uh, the Crystron Link will certainly help, but since it doesn't float like the other Yang Zings, since it's kind of a slow, grindy deck to get up to where you need to be, I don't think it would work nearly as well as it does in the other, like, Synchro decks. You could certainly play this deck and just use it to make big boss monsters and stall for days, but it's a much more casual deck now than it was back then. And unless Yang Zings get their own link, I can't see it getting any better anytime soon. Deck number 85, Christmas Gift 2016. Uh, no banned cards in this. Lynx didn't make this deck any less viable because it wasn't viable in the first place. This is a troll deck, through and through. It was never intended to be good. Uh, if you've ever seen the Christmas episode, you know why I make this. Uh, it, it works as well now as it ever did. If you want, you could try the 2017 version, but they're both pretty much equal in power. That is to say, they're both pretty much just joke decks. <laughs> deck number 86, Deskbot OTK. No banned cards in this deck. Uh, it was hurt a little bit by Lynx, but just barely. Uh, not being able to summon multiple Pendulum monsters kind of hurts. But this deck rarely did that in the first place, and between the Heavy Metal Foes Link and the Klee Link that uses Machine Monsters, uh, you should be able to pop those in there and this will work just about as well as it did. Honestly, I think this deck works about as well now as it did back then. You just want to change the Spell Trap lineup, it really stands to be updated, uh, especially including Wavering Eyes, now that it's unbanned. But other than that, it's pretty solid. I mean, if you, you can OTK with 009, there, there's not much your opponent can do. Uh, I've actually been testing this one out. I'm, I'm, I plan to make desk bots again pretty soon, if I can. We'll see. I still haven't tested it against a lot of the meta stuff. Might be a little bit too power crept, but there, oh, there's only one way to find out. Deck number 87, Abyss Actor Beatdown. No banned cards in this thing. These were hurt a bit by Lynx, just as, as most Pendulum decks are. Uh, but the Metal Foe Lynx should, should make it back up to par. Um, this was never a deck that really swarmed out of the extra deck. It was much more about just getting one or two really big beat stick monsters on the field and beating your opponent down with them, and then using the uh, the spell trap support to get rid of things. So I think this might fare better than most Pendulum decks. That being said, you'll definitely want to replace the Abyss Actors backstage since putting monsters into the extra deck isn't as good as it used to be, and you'll probably want to update this with some of the newer Abyss Actor monsters as well, as well as some links. I can't really say for sure, I haven't looked into it, but this is definitely a solid frame. I'll be using this as a basis for making a new Abyss Actor deck sometime in the next couple months or so. I'll at least try them out, see if I can make them work under Master Rule 4. Deck number 88, Anti-Meta Ass. It used to play Vanity's Emptiness at 1, which is now banned. Uh, you could replace it with Quiet Life. Lose one turn, evenly matched, any any strong floodgate or disruption, really. Once again, this is a troll deck, which is completely unaffected by links, actually kind of an anti-link deck. Uh, and in general, barrier statues are always going to be a decent rogue slash troll contender. 
unless we're playing in like monarch format or the we just got out of the true uh the true draco format where there were a lot of normal summoned monsters but now that we're moving back into more special summoned things again uh the, these will see a resurgence i'll probably play another version of this of course, the Spell Trap lineup is going to be completely different. I'll probably want to put more draw power into it. Maybe Pot of Desires, maybe Cards of Demise, we'll see. Uh, either way, the solid concept is good. Uh, decent troll deck in general, but you're going to want a, a, a better lineup. And also get rid of Doom Caliber Knight. I don't think he's very good anymore. He, he's really been kind of power crept out of existence. Deck number 89, my Christron Advantage. Ah... Zero banned cards. Uh, the bad news is this version of Christrons has been pretty well killed off by Link Format. You can't play it as it exists. The good news is that even before the announcement of the Christron Link Monster, I had built a solid variant of this deck that focuses on making White Aura Whale, which is just a, a beast to, to summon on your opponent's turn. And that version has only been made more powerful by the release of the Christron Link. Like, honestly, if you don't know, Christrons are one of my favorite decks, and I'm really eager to play them again. Uh, Lynx may have killed off this version, but from the ashes, a new, more powerful Christron Phoenix will rise up to devour them all! Deck number 90, Red Eyes Fusion Turbo. Zero banned cards in this. This is another deck that was better before Lynx, but isn't hurt that much. Red Eyes Fusion prevents you from summoning the turn you use it, so you couldn't swarm that much anyway, and most of the time your opponent would remove your fusion monster before your turn came around, so it's not like you were f swarming with fusion and Ixie monsters. This just stops you from adding more momentum if you're already winning. Honestly, though, in general, this deck was pretty slow and borderline terrible even when I released it, and uh, Age has done it no favors. I mean, it's still playable, but you could do far better with Red Eyes, uh, even casually. Uh, plus, they have new support that may or may not render a lot of this stuff useless. Hard to say. I really haven't looked into it. As it stands, though, this doesn't even really form, like, a solid base to build on. Really just not a good deck at all. Uh, number 91, Ancient Gear Burnstall Beatdown. Zero banned cards in this. And it works pretty solidly in Lynx. This is another deck that focuses on making one big fusion monster. It doesn't need to swarm from the extra deck. So I think you're pretty solid with this. Uh, that being said, this version of the deck is pretty bad. Uh, it was bad at the time because I focused too much on making Chaos Giant and didn't leave any room for recovery. And it's even worse now because there's new Ancient Gear support that makes this variant even more outdated and terrible. Unlike the Red Eyes, though, you might be able to find, like, a decent skeleton to build on here. But other than that, I wouldn't really bother with this. I plan to come back to Ancient Gears eventually and try to redeem myself. Uh, but it's going to be with something entirely different than this. Deck number 92, Dragunity Toolbox. Played Dark Hole at 2, which is now at 1. I would replace it with a third Dragon Ravine, now that it's off the ban list, or just some better spell traps in general. If you don't remember, this deck was all about turboing out Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, uh, and it can still do that in Lynx, so Lynx haven't really hurt it that much. However, just in general, ending on only a Crystal Wing isn't as good as it used to be. Uh, this deck can still work if you're playing casually, or if you just really want to run Dragunities, but it's it's nothing special. It's, it's just Crystal Wing Turbo. And deck number 93, Fluffle OTK. Yet again, I played Dark Hole at 2. A lot of decks just getting screwed over by Dark Hole at 2, I tell you what. Uh, I would replace that with Fluffle Cat. Um, as for how it works in Lynx, this version doesn't work at all. Uh, but then again, this version of Fluffles was kind of outdated when I made it. Uh, I still focused on the Tiger-Wolf combo of popping everything with Tiger and then attacking multiple times when, with Wolf. When most people were focusing on Kraken for removal and swarming with, with Saber Tigers to attack. Uh, Fluffles, just as in general, work surprisingly well in Lynx, given that they're fusion-focused archetype. Uh, especially if you have access to Fright Fur Patchwork, which still isn't out in America. But my version doesn't work, uh, under Lynx, and I probably won't build Fluffles again, just because they, they at this point, they've become a standard OTK deck, and there's not really much room for innovation. Deck number 97, the CAC, the Constellar Artifact Kaijus. 
Uh, I played Norden in this, which is now banned. Replace it with any level 4 instant fusion target, doesn't really matter. Like many other decks, this one is slightly hampered by Link Format. It doesn't need to make a rank 5 Ixie every turn, and oftentimes it can't, but now that it no longer has the option to, it's hurt its viability somewhat. Of course, this was a silly troll deck at the time, and it still is. Uh, it's been power crept a little bit since its inception, since one well-placed kaiju doesn't hurt a lot of modern swarm decks, uh, but it's still a fun, interesting, casual deck, and it hasn't been hurt that much by Link Format. Deck number 95, 55 card Shiranui's. I played That Grass Looks Greener at 3, and it's now at 1. Uh, I would replace it either with some zombie hand traps like Ash Blossom or Ghost Ogre, uh, or with Pero Pero Cerberus, so you have more stuff in the graveyard. Uh, still pretty decent for Lynx. Not only does it have access to easy Psyframe Lord Omegas, but it can swarm enough to make Lynx. And it might be even better if we ever get links that like work specifically with zombies or something like that. In general, 60 card decks with that grass look greener took a big hit when that grass went to one. But if any deck can survive the hit, it's Shiranui's. Uh, since they get all their effects when they're banished, using left arm offering doesn't minus them like it does a lot of the other grass decks. And I'll probably come back in March and try another 60 card variant just to see if I can make it work again. Deck number 96, Ultimate Falcon Stun, no banned cards. This deck works pretty much the same now as it did before Link Format. Uh, you used to be able to get out like two Force Strixes, but aside from that, this deck mainly just sits on Ultimate Falcon, and you really no, only need one extra deck zone to do that. All you really have to do is pop in something simple like Security Dragon or Akashic Magician that you can get rid of your, your Force Strix if you have one stuck there and open up a new... Uh, extra monster zone for your ultimate falcon. And of course, if they ever make like a wing beast or a dark generic uh, link monster, then these will be in exactly the same place they were before. Overall, this is a pretty decent build, but it definitely needs some updating. Um, you, you'll want to throw in a couple generic links. You could possibly shoot up to final fortress falcon. I'm not sure if that makes it better. Although either way, kaijus keep it from being a serious rogue contender. But for casual play, or just if you want to troll in general, Maybe in a format with fewer kaijus, it can be pretty fun. I plan to come back to Raid Raptors eventually and try out their latest round of support to see how they hold up. Deck number 97, King Tiger Stun 2017. Yet again, I played Dark Hole at 2. Uh, you could replace that with Fissure or Hammer Shot, depending on whichever one you, you think is more trollsy. Lynx, once again, do not hurt this deck at all. This is a completely troll deck. Uh, and still one of my favorite decks, all around solid, especially if it goes first. Uh, I could still see this working about as well as it used to. Uh, you'll probably want to replace a couple things, maybe move the Oasis of Dragon Souls up into a back to the front instead. Uh, maybe some stronger traps, evenly matched, could work pretty good in this deck. Uh, otherwise, it's pretty solid as it is, and I tend to come back and update it again once each year comes around. Deck number 98, Dino Mist Toolbox. Zero banned cards in this one, yet again. Of all the Pendulum-based decks, Dino Mist are probably hurt the least uh, by Master Rule 4, just because Dino Mist Charge can add things back to the hand every turn. Considering the advent of Lynx, I'd probably cut the tuners out in favor of more Pendulum support, make this more of a beatdown-oriented deck and less of a toolbox. Uh, Dino Mist in general are still solid, though. Number 99, Ultimate Mind Games. The ban list cannot contain any of the cards on this deck. Uh, of course, no format can stop this deck. Completely unstop unfazed by links. Just just plowed through it like a brick wall. Um, still the only undefeated what a deck in what a deck history. I'm honestly surprised that every tournament isn't just mirror matches between this deck. And there's no reason not to play it. Whatever deck you're playing, drop it. Play uh, Ultimate Mind Games instead. What are you dumb? What are you stupid? Get out of here. A deck number 100, Shino Bird Turbo. Uh, nothing banned or limited in this deck. Uh, isn't impacted by Lynx in the slightest. And overall, just a really solid road deck. I I'm sure you can do better. You'll probably want to add in the new Spirit Monster that's a big-ass rock, if nothing else. But honestly, you could probably just play it as is. Still just a solid rogue deck. Deck number 101, True Fire King. I played Dark Hole at 2, Ignis Heat at 2, 
and True King's Return at 3, all of which are now at 1. Uh, I would replace with 3 Fire King Avatar of Arta, and then either Raigeki, or another Dragonic Diagram, or Masterpiece. You can put those three in however you want. Once more, we have a deck that is unaffected by links in their entirety. It took some hits from the ban list, sadly. Really weird, actually. I didn't play Masterpiece, and I only ran one Dragonic Diagram, because I was sure, like most people, that if anything from True Draco was going to get hit, it would be those two cards. And instead, Ignis Heat and True King's Return got hit. Uh, fortunately, a new Fire King card got released that can replace them, and now the true Dracos are properly nerfed, I think you can confidently put a Masterpiece in there, or any other true support you want, to, to make this deck function properly again. Uh, might even do better than it did before. It's a pretty solid rogue contender in my eyes, as long as your opponent can be destroyed, and I'm sure I'll come back to it sometime later this year. Unless I make, uh, pure true kings with worms. That would be interesting. I have to write that down. Deck number 102, Anti-Meta Thunder Bros. Yet again, I played Dark Hole at 2, and you can replace that with Lightning Vortex, or possibly something with Graveyard Summoning, like Back to the Front or Call of the Haunted. Um, not really affected by Lynx, because it really just sits on one extra deck monster at a time. Uh, overall, just yet again, another solid troll deck. If you want to lock people down, this still does that. It, it works as good now as it did a year ago, assuming you can go first and open with your combo. Uh, other than that, not really sure what you can add or change to it. It's just good as it is. Uh, deck number 103, Invoked Magician Girls. Also, no banned cards. Uh, slowed down a little bit by Lynx in the same way that all Invoked decks were. Uh, although there is an Invoked Link, but it's not easy to summon in this deck because the, the Magician Girls don't really summon a whole lot. So I can't imagine that making this any faster. And in general, this was more of a theme deck than anything. Uh, at the time, everyone was splashing Invoked with everything they could, and this was just my attempt to find the one viable archetype that no one else had used. If you want a fun theme deck with a bit of a bite to it, you can play this and it doesn't need any updating but it, it's not very competitive back then, and it's still not competitive now. There's like a dozen better things you can splash Invoked into, and I'm probably going to save Invoked to splash it into something more interesting next year. Uh, but it's still fun. Oh, may, maybe add a Spellbook draw engine to it. Might make it a little bit more powerful. And finally, that just brings us to deck number 104, Hardleg Spirits 2017. And like with so many decks on this list, I played Dark Hole at 2, not thinking that they would bring it from 1 to 2 and then put it back to 1, while retaining Raigeki at 1 for some... I don't know. That, that, I just did not expect that. I'd have so many more decks that, that it would be free and clear, where I, I just predicted perfectly and they weren't affected, if not for that one dark hole. <laughs> uh, either way, I'd replace it with Switch Hero, or Switcheroo, however you pronounce it, or another Hand Trap. Yet again, not really affected by Lynx, although there is still a lot you'd change from this. I mean, you can play it as is. I'd imagine it'd still do pretty well, aside from Eternal Nightmare being subpar spell trap removal if you're not playing against Pendulums. Uh, just like the other spirit deck, you'll probably want to add that rock that negates effects. That seems like it would be a good spirit to have. Uh, and probably more hand traps. This deck has always revolved around hand traps. Like, even back when I played it, before I even had the channel... Uh, I, it was filled with, like, Tragodian Gores, which were the best hand traps at the time. Uh, and now that hand traps are so prevalent, I can see them being a big feature in the 2018 version, unless they just get all nerfed by the time we get there. Either way, we'll see. The, the Spirit deck has always been my anti-meta deck of choice. It's always built specifically to counter the, the most popular decks at the time, so it almost always has quite a lot of changes to it, even if it's got that same basic core of, of Spirit Monsters. Spirit Monsters and Creature Swap, slash Switcheroo. Uh, those, if you don't know, Creature Swap is still my favorite card, and something that I don't think is going to get power crept anytime soon. Uh, I mean, it's, it's non-targeting monster stealing, and the spirits come back to your hand, so it's always going to be a plus one, and the more powerful monsters they make, unless they're unaffected by spell cards, the, the better Creature Swap gets for you, because you're just going to be able to steal more and more powerful monsters as the years go on. But anyway, now I'm rambling again. Uh, that, ladies and gentlemen, is every deck from the second year of What a Deck. 
Uh, I hope you enjoyed this trip down memory lane. Thanks for joining me for two years of What a Deck Goodness. And I hope to see you back here in 2019 for the Year 3 retrospective. Uh, next week, I'll be back to business with a more standard What a Deck, though I'm not sure exactly what I'll be playing yet. Until then, as always, good luck and have fun. <laughs>